You're a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we have the tier list for April, which of course will also apply for the second stage of the KC Cup. Now the tier 1 decks are the decks most likely to do well, although that doesn't mean that the rest of the tier list is not gonna do well or have a, a relatively high appearance rate. Now I think that the tier list right now is way clearer than the tier list in March. If you saw that tier list video, I did not have a tier 1. Of course, now we do have a tier 1. So let's get straight into it. Tier 3. The first deck in this tier and in the tier list in general will be Cyber Dragons. They keep their spot in the tier list once again. A really powerful deck with incredibly high attacking monsters in their arsenal and their extra deck, of course, which can pretty much defeat any deck in the tier list but still has some consistency issues and that is the main problem. That is why Cyber Dragons keep being tier 3 and they're not being elevated to tier 2 for example. I think they are a good deck and I think that we will see them in the KC Cup but I doubt they will be one of the best decks in the second stage. Next up in tier 3 I have Black Wings. Now this is a deck that seems to be on a downwards spiral lately from tier 1 a couple of months back to then tier 2 and now tier 3. To be fair though, it has been hit by the ban list while suffering those demotions in the tier list. Blackwing players should not really worry though because their deck is still good, it just has a lot of competition right now. I still believe the deck can perform in the KC Cup, I don't know what level it can reach though. No Mortal Can Resist seems to be a common skill for this deck and a lot of others in the meta as well in order of course to counter Siranui. Next up I have Lightsworns. Of course this deck still runs a 30 card variant to counter their own milling effects. Which also means they can have space for a variety of tech cards like Sphere Kuribo and even Thunder Dragon Levianir that came out in the second mini selection box. To be honest, for the amount of gems their builds can cost, I am not really surprised by their ability to perform in the meta. The second stage will totally be a challenge for them. Next up, I have Luna Lights. This deck came out with a bang. It was easy to build, had high OTK potential and everyone and their mama was using it. I think now that things are more clear and I also played the deck, I would say it was a bit overhyped. It is still a good deck, don't get me wrong, but it can have a really hard time dealing with top tier decks if it doesn't open with a perfect hand to fuse and OTK. In my opinion, the deck can be inconsistent if you do not run 3 Martin as well, so free to play players need to have that in mind. Grid is 100% the way to go here in order to be protected at least once from the danger of other OTK decks. Next up, I have Dark Lords. The deck that ends tier 3 is the former king of duelings. I was really on the fence about them, but paired up with Lightsworn cards, they can be pretty strong. I have to say though, they are fighting for their spot this month since, after a hard ban list, they share a little bit worse of a fate than Black Winds. Another deck that can rely on No Mortal Can Resist to deal with graveyards. Destiny Draw can still be an incredibly helpful choice though. Moving up to tier 2 we have Christrons. They haven't done as good as I expected after the ban list, but they can still make decks struggle with their resilience. They definitely have a stable skill with Transcendent Crystals for months now. Christrons tend to be more of a control strategy. Although they can have explosive plays with their synchro monsters, I still think they can struggle to find momentum. They can live through some OTK dex attacks, but sometimes it comes down to if you can stop the OTK play and then move in a positive position in the duel in order to win. The deck has a strong matchup against Cyber Dragons, Luna Lights, and also Blue Eyes most of the time, so that is really something positive for them. Next up, Masked Heroes. Another offensive strategy. Masked heroes are back in the tier list. The newest mini box gave this deck new life by adding Vision Hero Increase and Faris to their arsenal. The new cards are probably not even needed at 3 in order for the deck to be optimal since it has a lot of tools to squeeze into a 20 card build. Of course, the Masked Chains plays with Anki are still here and they are still good. Since it's a really offensive deck, sometimes it lacks stalling ability, so playing grid can be proven to be amazing for you. The same way it can be good for Luna Lights. 
still some players prefer Master of Fusions or another skill to boost fusion consistency. Next up, Dark Magician. Still a juggernaut in the meta and no one can deny that. Dark Magician has great matchups against some top tier decks like Element Sabers and Siranui because the deck in general has a good matchup against decks that are more back row centric at times. Of course, Circle is still an amazing tool. And don't forget, the deck did not see a nerf come its way, only the competition became a bit stronger. Dark Magician decks should, in my opinion, either take Night End's Sorcerer to make synchro plays or Kiku the Ghost Destroyer in order to cover more matchups in the second stage of the case cap. Next, and the last deck for tier 2, is Blue Eyes. Who would have thought, right? Dark Magician and Blue Eyes, hand in hand in the meta of duelings. This deck is great and the main reason I cannot put it a tier higher is because I don't think it will be one of the decks topping the second stage. Another reason is that it has a weird or bad matchup you can say maybe against all tier 1 decks and as mentioned before, Christians. And I don't think Christians will be that popular, but the other decks will be. Although paired up with alternative evolution and strong monsters in the main and extra deck, this deck can totally compete with the best of them. Moving on to tier 1 now, and the decks I believe have the biggest chance to win the KC Cup. First off, Thunder Dragons. The deck that in my opinion will win the whole KC Cup. The addition of Levianir is such a boost for the deck that made it a force to be reckoned with. Or even tech against. By far the most explosive deck in the meta in my opinion, it also has a toolkit of synchro monsters that are not archetype specific and can deal with many different situations and scenarios. The deck can run Black Rose Dragon, Brionac, Frame Lord Zeta and even Samurai Destroyer. Of course, the piece that helps with the synchro summoning is Light Sword Raiden along with Light Brigade. Isn't it kind of weird that the Light Sworn engine helps other decks more than themselves? It is what it is, I guess, but Thunder Dragons will do good. Thing is, the deck has a price on it, so it won't be popular at lower point ranges in the late days of the cup. Next up, Element Sabers Invoked. Another classic appearance in my tier list. Element Sabers will do great. I think that before you start the second stage of the KC Cup, you need to make a decision on what strategy you will run. An ODK one or a control one? Because the meta seems to be divided in that way. Even after the skill and card limitations, this deck is still doing absolutely fine. It has completely shifted to Destiny Draw and a 20 card build and also has drifted away from Cosmic Cyclone because of the limited 3 addition to the ban list. The power of invocation is tremendous, and all the invoked fusion monsters have great uses. Except maybe Kalga, which I don't really like, other than using your opponent's monster to fuse, and maybe eating up on the resources a bit. Another favorite to win it all. The last deck on tier 1 and the tier list in general, Siranui. Back again at the top. I sincerely love this deck, and looking back, I should probably have put it as the number one deck that free to play players should play in my top 5 list, but when I made that list I wasn't that sure and Luna Lights were doing extremely well, so the evolution of the meta wasn't 100% certain. The reason why so many decks tend to run No Mortal Can Resist is Siranui. They did get a hit, but it wasn't anything serious, it just limited the arsenal of staple back row they can play, which is of course a fair nerf to any top tier deck in my opinion. This deck is a safe choice to approach the cup and I think that a lot of people will expect to see them, so they will either use a skill or a card in order to counterplay them and that is the main reason I'm not sure if they will win the whole thing. I will predict this will be the most popular deck though this weekend. And that's my list for the month, I hope it helped you get a picture of how things might go in the second stage and don't forget telling me if I missed something in the comments down below and subscribe for more Duel Links content. Best of luck to all of you in the second stage of the Case Cup, I hope you reach your goals there. Happy Duel Links, stay safe, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.